Hi and welcome back to this video where we continue upgrading our ThinkPad in various multiple ways. So another thing I wanted to touch on briefly is um, I know the reason why ThinkPads are great, so why are they so cheap? People say, well, it's not because they're bad. You have to understand how economics work in this case. If you're looking for a laptop, you might have stumbled upon them. The X1 Carbon or the T470 are both excellent new models, or if you're into retro stuff, you might have heard of the early 2000s T61 and T40 IBM branded models. Looking at both of these categories, and nothing about either screams value in particular, but once you realize that these are business laptops as opposed to consumer laptops, it starts to make sense. Businesses tend to sell off older machines for years down the line or so, even if they still function well. So because many businesses look to sell off four-year-old ThinkPads, the price dramatically decreases due to lots of supply. Simple economics take place and there are lots of them on eBay for extremely cheap prices. Even if as a consumer to buy these machines new, you had to pay much more than even the average person go that's going to spend money on a laptop. Now, here's the thing. You can use Windows on it, or you can use Linux. In my opinion, Linux is better optimized, and I'm a fan of Linux, so that's what I have installed right now, as you can see on there. That's Linux Debian. So, in a sense, you can count that as an upgrade to install a fresh operating system on it. Either way, regardless of which way you end up going, but we're going to continue with some hardware upgrades, so I'm going to shut this down. close it so now that we've finished kind of upgrading the computer and we got ourselves a fun little accessory what are we missing really well in modern computers you at most have two or three USB ports and I'm talking about laptops of course on desktops you can have as many as you want really on different motherboards it depends but for laptops many modern ones only let you have one or two USB ports and sometimes they're not full-size USB ports so having that many ports here USB VGA Ethernet is already great but what if you, one of those ports kind of stopped working or if you wanted to grab um, an additional device with you and you didn't have a USB port to plug it in and you just had to use more USB ports than you have access to. Well, here's where we come back to the express card slot. So this express card slot has multiple uses. Think of it as the PCIe express interface on a desktop compressed into a different form factor. So yes, you can hook up a GPU to this if you want to, only the problem is, is that it only provides X1 line of bandwidth, so as opposed to a normal PCIe Express slot, which gives you 16 or 8 or 4, this one only gives you 1, so you're going to be facing some bandwidth bottlenecks as you go on. Now, these can be had on eBay for varying prices, mostly very cheap. What this does is essentially gives you three more USB 3.0 ports, which this laptop by default doesn't actually have. It has USB 2.0 and always power on USB. So this adds USB 3.0 capability in the form of three additional USB ports. So now you'll definitely never run out of them. So how do you install it? Well, it's simple. Point the pointed end to the left and then you just insert the card in here. Apply a little bit of force and boom. So as you can now see, we've got three additional USB ports, which is pretty good. But again, connecting it to an external monitor, most monitors these days are HDMI only or HDMI and display port. 
this only has a VGA video out. So in that case, what I would suggest is to get this accessory straight from Lenovo called the Ultra Base. Yeah, it's basically a dock, kind of like a port extender in modern computers, which um, allows you to have some additional ports. So here you get three USB ports, one AC jack, another VGA port, a display, display port, a microphone jack, a headphone jack, and another Ethernet port. Also has a slot for an Ultra Bay, which is something that is a proprietary standard to Lenovo ThinkPad line, but essentially another USB port here in a Kensington lock by the way essentially what it does is it allows you to plug in a caddy which will either hold a hard drive or an SSD something like a floppy drive or something like a CD drive so a CD drive is what I have now nowadays you might want to skip this because well CDs aren't that common or popular but as this is a DVD as this a uh, CD RW and DVD RW combo drive, you can actually play DVDs on this if you so desire, or burn DVDs on this, which can be really useful if you're someone like me who delves into computing and the projects include things like installing operating systems on devices that won't boot from USB or are or have errors booting from USB and such. So to plug this in. You simply slide it in here like that. To actually plug the ThinkPad into the dock, it's a fairly simple procedure. You just take the ThinkPad and you plop it down here like so. Now, when it's up and running, you will need to press this button over here. And then once the light is green, you pop open the latch. If you have a second battery, then you can charge it through this port at the same time as you're using your ThinkPad, only you have to be plugged into the mains to do that. Let's turn it on and just showcase how that works. So the battery indicator is yellow because our battery is low. This has hardware indicators, which is cool for a, lin for a minimal Linux install if you're into that sort of thing, because then you can skip having battery indicators in your main operating system if you don't care about percentages and such, and only want these things. So, yeah, as we have logged in, you can now see this light is red, if we press this button, it goes green, and then we can unlatch it safely. The reason you want to press that button first is to make sure that you unmount all the additional ports and devices that are connected to this. So for example, a hard drive or an SSD that's externally connected, or in the Ultra Bay, it will have to be unmounted before you can really plug it in, plug it off to ensure that you don't lose any data and such. So this gives us a display port output, as you can see on here, but many monitors don't even support that, they just support HDMI, and for that there's another quick dongle that you'll need to use to fully plug in an HDMI cable and have this become your desktop replacement essentially. This is the dongle you need. This takes, this is, has a male display port connector and it outputs to a female HDMI connector. So you can just plug in an HDMI cable in here and then plug this into the display port and boom, you have a full HDMI out with audio and everything. Pretty sweet. But, if you want to use VGA with this, you both have a VGA port. In fact, you can use both at the same time with two different monitors, if that's your thing. And you can run all three at the same time if you want to. You can have one HDMI monitor, one VGA monitor, and one of the ThinkPad's built-in monitor. So overall, it's pretty sweet. With the Ultra Bay, 
you can come home with your ThinkPad and just plop it down on the dock and have it automatically connect to your mouse, keyboard, and whatever else your desktop setup requires. It's not quite useful to carry it around with the ultra base attached as it consumes more power. And if you haven't noticed, it makes the laptop quite a bit chunkier, which uh, kind of makes it look like an older IBM machine. But uh, yeah, that concludes this video. Thank you for watching. We have a fairly usable laptop for somewhere in the range of 200 pounds at most. CD drive, hot SSD, 8 gigs of RAM, and external monitor capability, lots of USB ports if you're into that, and Kensington lock if you want to get the keys for it. And you know, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Bye.